Welcome to the Midnight Gallery. If you'd follow me, I'd like to show you a few pieces from my latest collection. The artist in question is a bit of a recluse, so it's unlikely you'll get the chance to speak with them. But that tends to be a running trend among the creatively gifted. Point to me a true artist who works a blue-collar 9-to-5, and I'll point to you a pig with wings. <laughs> This latest installment is uniquely grotesque. I promise you've never seen anything like it. Come now, don't give me that look. The oh, the oh, I've never seen anything like it except for the half a dozen times I'd seen something exactly like it. Look, trust me. This collection is something special. Now, before I reveal this first piece, I must ask those of you who consider yourself squeamish to think about stepping outside until the viewing is finished. This first piece is not for the faint of heart, and I'm afraid only grows more macabre from here. Anyone? Last chance. Okay. You've been warned. With that out of the way, I present to you the first piece in our collection. This painting is titled Golgotha. As you'll note, the artist used an array of vivid colors, and I'm sure you've also noticed the difficulty in how to describe them. There are, of course, the traditional colors mixed in, the reds, blues, greens, and everything in between. Yet they pale in comparison to the artist's use of these new colors. How the artist was able to achieve this? I couldn't tell you. All that I do know is that it took them a very long time to bring this painting to life. Worth it though, wouldn't you say? Look at how the new colors breathe vitality into still imagery. It feels like you're actually witnessing the crucifixion of Christ. I'm sorry, what was that? Ah, yes. Despite what you may believe, and I do understand that what I'm about to say could be regarded as blasphemous. But what you see framed in front of you is what took place on the day of Christ's crucifixion. Note the intricate detail on Christ's agonized face. Look at how he writhes in pain, his features flipped upside down, twisting his grimace into a sadist smile. The stirking image of the crucifix turned on its head, the wooded figures that huddled around Jesus holding out their cups to collect the river of blood and tears as they drain from two forsaken eyes and a hundred fresh wounds. The little cherubs seen in their true form laughing with their many mouths amongst the throng of hapless watchers as the hooded figures deal out a punishment far more unholy than what is taught in Sunday school. No. Jesus did not die for your sins. You carry those sins with you to the grave. He died for the pleasure of his demented father, who watched the whole affair with sickening glee from high in the skies above. See the seraph in the corner. Give it a moment. Yes. Now you see, and the seraph sees you too. Sir, are you okay? You look a bit pale. And let's move on, shall we? It's not hmm, healthy, let's say, to stare at these paintings for too long. If you're all ready to move on, I'll be happy to show you our next piece. This painting is titled, Payment for the Pied Piper. 
In Hamlin, Germany, the year 1284, 130 children were led away by the Pied Piper to the tune of his magical pipe. They disappeared into the mountains and were never seen again. This fairy tale is more truth than fable, though the fate of those poor children had never been revealed. That is until the artist painted this shocking piece of Germanic history. Behold the tragic story of the Pied Piper. Horrific, is it not? The fabled Pied Piper, clad in his multicolored garb, reaching out one shaking hand to a three-fingered paw cloaked in shadow. The shadowed hand releasing its grip and letting five gold pieces fall into the open palm of the Pied Piper. The stunned look etched onto his pale face, as if being unaware of his previous actions until the first piece of gold had touched his outstretched hand. The children marching one by one in the background, crying and holding one another, growing faint and distant as they walk into the mouth of an unusually shaped cave. How stalag tights and stalagmites jut at crooked angles to suggest the children are not walking into the entrance of a cave but into the maw of a great and hungry beast. Who's to say that isn't what happened to all those missing children? The artist does a masterful job of blending every little detail with such elusiveness that it cannot really be confirmed one way or the other. My goodness, I is that man okay? I thought he looked a little sick after the first painting, but I figured he'd be over it by now. No, n no, go on. Pick him up. He'll be all right. Here, I have a spare bottle of water in my bag. Drink up. You won't be able to leave until the tour is over, I'm afraid, so you'll just have to ride it out until we're finished. Luckily for you, we have one more piece left. Though, I'm sorry to say this next painting is what I would consider to be the artist's magnum opus. A true masterpiece. Come now. We close up soon and I want you all to really soak in this final painting. This last painting is titled the God of Arcadia. Ma'am, please, if you don't stop screaming, I'll be forced to call security. This is an art gallery, not a fun house. If it's so horrific, then why not shield your eyes? There you go. Though I do wish you'd stop that whimpering. By the way, how is that man from earlier doing? Is he on his feet and feeling better? No? Oh. I see. Well, his heart wouldn't be the first to give out under the gaze of such a magnificently haunting creature. It's been said that those who witness a god in their true form die of fright. Of course, the art artist had never actually seen a god, but... I find it strange that some primal part of anyone who looks upon the artist's masterpiece feels an ancient sensation of alarm roused from within. A need to shrink away from sight. I tell you, if the gods still walked among us today, we'd all be deep in the belly of a cave, trying our best to remain as still and silent as possible. I often wonder how the artist was able to channel such vivid imagery through the paintbrush without going completely mad. I would love to know for myself, but they're a recluse, as I've said, and they haven't come down from the mountain in a very long time. 
It's a rare treat when we receive items from the artist. The hairs on the back of my neck still stand on end when I look into the eyes of this creature of transcendency, the basis of all beings. Pan in full view beneath the olive tree. Marvelous. Terrible. The perfect balance of life and death. Now, I want everyone to listen very closely. This is my favorite part of the tour. Do you hear it? I can tell by the looks of terror on your face that you do. Don't worry. It isn't a trick. There are no hidden speakers in this room. The music is indeed coming from the painting. The tune is being played through the hollow reeds of a dead nymph. The tragic, haunted melody of the satyr. Truly breathtaking. Oh my, was that in poor taste? I'd forgotten about the fellow on the floor. No matter. The dead can hear the music, too. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I must conclude the tour. It has been such a treat having all of you here tonight. Be sure to sign your name in our guest book on your way out, and please drive safe. Don't worry about the man on the floor. He'll be gone in the morning like the rest of our ill-fated attendees. No, we don't touch dead bodies. We leave them where they lay. They'll get up on their own, eventually, and shuffle off to wherever it is that the dead wander. Anyway, thank you all very much for coming. A couple of quick things to go over, and then you'll be free to leave. Sir, please refrain from trying to break down the door. It'll unlock as soon as I'm finished. Now, you've all been privy to such delightfully horrible artwork. And you are so very lucky to be one of the select few groups to witness this collection. But I must caution you that there may be some side effects. First and foremost, if any of you feel the sudden urge to slam on the gas pedal and Aim for the nearest pedestrian on your drive home. I advise you to pull over immediately, remove your keys from the addiction, and walk the rest of the way. Do your best to avoid people as you continue your way home. Just because you're on foot doesn't mean you won't want to plunge your thumbs into the first pair of eye sockets you come across. Second, the music of a god cannot be replicated. We've had to add this little tidbit to our speech after a man murdered his mistress and tried to make a pan flute out of her. Hmm. Bits and pieces. Barbically trite, if you ask me, but some people can't help themselves. But it is the music of a god after all. And there is nothing else like it on this earth, I'm afraid. Third, stay away from your children if you have any. Better yet, avoid children for the next few days if possible. There may be a feeling, a need really, to bring them to the top of a mountain or the mouth of a cave. Or, in rare cases, you may wish to crucify them. This feeling will abate, or it may not. If you want to keep your mind occupied until the effects of the artwork wear off, I suggest trying to draw a two-sided triangle. But lastly, please be sure to throw out your brochures and the recycling on your way out if you wish to discard them. It's admittedly a bit of a leap 
down from inexplicable urges to commit manslaughter and sacrifice, but we do try to keep our gallery tidy as best we can. That is all. The door is unlocked. You can be on your way. Thank you all again for coming, and be sure to keep an eye out for the artist's next collection. Though, anyone alive today is unlikely to see it, but you never know what's around the corner. The artist is, as you've all bared witness, full of surprises.